press on the stage, but also Engineer Farhad, are you happy to participate? And also uh, Dr. Anudi, are you happy to participate as well? Fantastic, great. different 
uh, fuels. Um, I, I have not heard a lot of uh, CNG typically. So I think if we speak about carbon and, and hydrocarbon, the CNG component should not be underestimated. This is, this is certainly a, 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 a very important component. And uh, I was uh, satisfied to hear this morning also that somebody spoke about public transportation. So, so mobility is a multiple version solution and has to be combined uh, in dependency of the demand. Today we have also saturation effect, we have saturation on the road. Uh, typically in my region it's difficult to move people in the morning at 8 from road to train because train is also full. So we have to discuss also the, the kind of issues. Uh, congestion is not only road congestion, it's maybe too much displacement, too much transport, and this has to be discussed at a very broad level. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's interesting that the, 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 the title of this session is very specifically about sustainable mobility. It doesn't actually mention electromobility. Um, if we broaden that to talk about other forms of transport, I mean, human powered transport, you know, walking and cycling. Uh, very often, um, the, uh, the weather conditions here are given as a, as, a, as a reason as to why these modes of transport are underutilized, and yet there are many months of the year where actually it's probably nicer to walk and cycle here than it is in, in Northern Europe. Um, but uh, we see a booming in cycling and walking in, in Europe. And is there, is yeah, that, I mean, that definitely has such a huge role here uh, in the UAE. I was in a conference a few months ago, and the Someone said that in the UAE we have six months of summer, we have three months of uh, uh, beautiful weather, and three months of hell. So I thought, okay, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Uh, I mean, when you talk about sustainable and public um, transportation, yes, there is still a lot to be done. Uh, I mean, I know when I travel to Europe, uh, I'm very happy to walk kilometers after kilometers. I'm happy to ride a bicycle, I'm happy to jump on the public transportation. Uh, the weather really makes a difference. Uh, it really helps. Uh, here things are a little bit different. Uh, I mean, I could, I could take, I could, I guess, take my car to the closest metro station uh, and then jump onto the metro, ride the metro down close to four, but then I have to walk five minutes uh, from the metro station to my office. And I know if I did that in the summer, this condor will be see-through, so I just can't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a problem here, uh, but also the culture is a little different. You have people who, uh, when you talk about privacy, when you talk about culture, especially if you, let's say, talk about the, the, the female gender, and you know, we, we can't expect them to be, uh, to be out in the, in, the, in the public transportation. There, there are concerns there. So, it is a mix of things, and when you talk about sustainability, I mean, for me, a concept, I think that, okay, if I want to be environmentally friendly or conscious, and I want to use transport, public transportation, today, I would have to take a taxi from my home to the metro station, a taxi, and then take the metro itself, and then jump on another taxi from there to my office. Uh, I would probably have paid three times the amount of money that I would have paid if I just jumped in my car and drove to work. Uh, so, these are things where, you know, when we look at integrating all of these things together, where maybe tomorrow, if uh, I've got the null card, which RTA, for example, has, and uh, that null card identifies that, okay, I'm driving to a metro station from my home, maybe I get a discounted taxi fare. When I jump on the null, fine, I use the, the tram. And then when I'm getting off, to use the null card as well in the taxi from the, the train station to my office, also gives me maybe a discount. This way I feel that, okay, because I'm integrating this and I'm using the public facilities, it becomes cheaper. And if it does become cheaper, it becomes something a lot of people here consider uh, and will think about. Uh, the public transportation system here is very well used. Uh, I mean, I've jumped on the, the, you know, the tram several times uh, just to see what it's like. And, and it is very well used. You know, I was surprised to see that and it's really encouraging. Of course, they just need to continue what they're doing, you know, and uh, hopefully that expands with the Etihad Rail hopefully coming up in the future, which will remove thousands of trucks uh, from the roads. Uh, so it's almost a matter of time, I think, for the UAE to, to really be able to have the transport system that has already been envisioned, and it's just a matter of time. Okay. Um,
Any questions for our, our panel at all? Yes, Dennis.
mainly electricity. We have seen battery buffers. Uh, uh, we know that charging an electrical vehicle will require access uh, to the grid. And uh, there is a danger that if you keep uh, the utility company managing the grid, that they take advantage of their monopoly. So in Europe, there has been a trend to force the utilities to separate the assets of the grid that uh, needed to be managed under a regulated uh, authority. Couldn't agree with you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is the way the government is set up, this is the way how things are, but yeah, I, I agree, um, it, it would make a difference. Um, you know, the, the, the electricity and water providers today in the country are, are doing a fantastic job with the infrastructure and providing uh, what is needed, but um, uh, definitely uh, it could be done more efficiently, it probably could be done a lot cheaper. Europe, uh, I mean, you see all the power plants there, it's, it's all privatized. Uh, it's, uh, they're, they're easily, easily governed by the, by the governments and the regulatory bodies there. So, you know, today, um, a regulatory body can't really shut down another regulatory body. Uh, as a federal uh, agency, I can't take uh, anybody to court uh, for, you know, what can you do? It's, uh, you know, it, it's a tricky situation, but this is something that uh, will could be looked at in the future. That will be an advantage, I think, <laughs> for many. In, in a way, having less players in the electricity sector might also be a benefit because it could be easier to implement, push through some changes which would otherwise be quite complicated because you have to deal with distribution companies, transmission system operators, generation companies, suppliers, regulators. Uh, so, so. I guess if there's, if there's a concerted effort from the top, it, it, it might be perhaps easier and, and quicker to implement the changes if, if they're being pursued. So, it's a silver lining way to I mean, you look at, for example, the uh, telecommunications in the country. Uh, previously, you had it so lot, so monopoly. What happened? A company called Do came along. Um, and you see what's happening in the market today. It's a lot is always going to have the edge on but do is putting pressure, do is driving a lot of things. So, you know, they're, they've been very creative with things. So, uh, you know, packages have changed, uh, plans have changed, uh, there are options. Uh, I agree with you, maybe it would be scary to have all of a sudden 10 private uh, power plants up and available that we have to deal with. But I believe that if it is a controlled number, uh, it can definitely be good for consumers uh, and good for all parties. <laughs> I guess it also becomes a scale. I mean, at the end of the day, these are, these are relatively small populations compared to you know, bigger countries in the world. Does it, does it make sense to have more than one? It didn't, it didn't before, and that's why I think we are where we are today. But as things progress and as things change, uh, you know, again, it goes back to the leadership. They, they have to let these guys sit down and sleep on it and think, okay, we can charge what we want to do what we want to. It's all about the people and what, they, what the authorities want. Are doing for the consumers at the end. So we're, we're an international market. People are, you know, we're so cosmopolitan here. Uh, you know, anybody comes in from a plane and says, "Oh wow, you know, it's cheaper in my country to do this or that." It's taken into consideration. You know? So there is a good balance. Yes, definitely on the side. So my name is Desan uh, Shmuladi. I'm from Dubai Municipality. Uh, I just have a suggestion, in fact. Um, um, I was thinking about it in, for the past two, two days. Why don't we um, develop an association um, specialized in future mobility? Because I think we need to raise the awareness not only that, but connect the mind of people towards the future mobility. And through developing this global association, uh, starting, I mean, uh, we could have the base here in Dubai, being always number one, because Sheikh Mohammed is always asking for number one, being number one. So we're going to really be pioneers. Uh, 
on the other side, we will be achieving the, uh, the national goals, which has been set across the whole country. Not only that, but even attract global um, directions in this particular uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, future mobility. So, um, this association could be comprised of different people across you know, the, the government bodies, comprising of you know, as many members as possible. The, 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 the ultimate goal of this association is to basically drive it you know, and have a way forward for this initiative. I mean for this, uh, for the future of uh, And I think as Dubai Municipality we would be more than happy to support at you know, any direction that this association would believe is you know, um, uh, suitable and good. So we are, we are more than happy to support. But I think let's let's click it now because a lot of people, you know, they feel always this. And by the way, I'm an automotive expert registered in the bike world. So uh, I know a lot of uh, automobiles. I've been into this field for more than 17 years. So I think number one is awareness. Number two is getting people together and trying to basically tell them what is future mobility. And uh, on the other side, focusing as well on the technical aspect of these papers. You know, uh, when, when we explain to people the technical aspect, you know, uh, apart from the uh, uh, environmental benefits, I think people would really welcome it. I've seen a number of people actually looking for these kind of vehicles, but uh, you know the challenges is the distance of these vehicles, which I think we could you know try to overcome it hopefully in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, any other final thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions? Power transfer when, when the vehicle is in a, a, a home or in a garage somewhere. 
and I think more likely, um, more likely is probably the role of the road authority to, to play a role in rolling out that sort of technology um, and certainly if it's dynamic wireless power transfer it, it will have to be the road authority that does that because they own the infrastructure um, and they will be responsible for, for, for I think you know, maintaining that, that, that infrastructure. Um, so yes, I think it's possible to do, but whether it's the role, the role of the automotive manufacturers, um, I, I would question that. Um, in terms of the second question, uh, which is are we challenging the automotive manufacturers to be more sustainable? Um, again, I'll, I'll throw it open to the panel and see what they, see what they think. I can't say much about <laughs> We are produced our three in it. <laughs> you know, I'll also work on the next one on the manufacturing uh, process. What I know is that um, in, in this project, we were working really much with one of, one of the reports looked at the life cycle assessment or life cycle comparative assessment between an electric vehicle and a conventional vehicle. And uh, they obviously, electric vehicle has a lot of environmental benefits, primarily because they are not tailpipe emissions. But there are also uh, uh, effects in terms of the battery manufacturing process, which, if it's not uh, managed correctly, if, it's, if, if, if uh, the sustainable procedures are not in place, could end up being slightly more harmful uh, overall than the production process of automation vehicles. So there, there are some aspects that need to be taken into account aside from, from the emissions, from the daylight emissions as well. But from the report, they, they seem to be, to be manageable. That's as much as I can add to the discussion <laughs> uh, Well, do we have anybody from one of the motor manufacturers who would care to respond to that? We have people from Toyota, Ford, GM here. Uh, does anybody care to respond to that? Um, uh, my name is Munir Hussain. I'm from Alfodia Motors. And we have another question, if I can finish that first. <laughs> uh, so we were talking about this whole uh, the future mobility. In fact, uh, most of this mobility is even, uh, you can say, it's a current uh, scenario. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis by the government authorities uh, for the environmental friendly vehicles on the road. But what we see is not fully translated. We don't see enough population of those cars on the road. And it, it, it amounts to government departments, semi-government departments, general public. I hope there is some concrete steps along the way to implement, to improve the environments by introducing such cars. So, so what you're saying is you think it's the responsibility of the government and also individuals to drive the uptake of... Yeah, this should be, you see, like we talk of incentives, everybody there, so quite a few presentations were there. Uh, those incentives are certainly critical, uh, which so far we don't see many you know, um, in the policy as of, uh, by the government authorities, which, which is very common worldwide. You must have seen some presentation yesterday, maybe today I was a bit I didn't attend the whole session. It would certainly be helpful. People are, uh, I'm sure they, they want to, but there's a fine balance between the cost and the utility of these vehicles. So, this, this was my point that there should be more and more encouragement for those cars to be in the room. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, unless there are any other final questions, I think we can, we can wrap up there. Um, thank you very much indeed to the, to the panel. Thank you. <laughs> our, our host, uh, His Excellency. Mr. Abdullah Al Almaini to, to, to perhaps provide a couple of closing remarks and right at the end. Uh, but before we do that, I would just like to, to say a few words of thanks myself. Um, I mean, first of all, a, a big thank you, a, a huge thank you, in fact, to all of our presenters. I don't think we've, we've had anything like as rich a discussion, a richer debate as we would have done over the last two days if we hadn't had the quality of, of presentations that we've had. So to all our presenters, I'd like just to, to, uh, to say a big thank you. I'd also like to, to, to just say a word of thanks to our, to our host, Esma, um, who I think have been quite visionary in, in setting up this event, hosting the event, uh, and allowing people to, to have, uh, to, to put, to, to put to, 
guess, enable a forum where, where we can discuss such sort of forward thinking ideas, um, as well as our sponsors, without which, uh, again, these events um, would be hard to, uh, to put on in, in the way that they, they, they have been. Um, also, thanks to our organisers, uh, Messi Frankfurt, who have once, once again done a fabulous job uh, um, in putting on this event. And finally, uh, a big thanks to you. Um, and I'm extremely pleased to see that even at the end of a, uh, a challenging and interesting two days, that the room is still full of people. So I think a uh, testament to, uh, to all the people I've just mentioned in, in putting on such a, such a wonderful, uh, wonderful event. Um, and then one final request before we have our closing remarks. Um, I think hopefully you'll have on the table some feedback forms. Um, I would ask you before you leave, if you could please complete those feedback forms. It does help the organisers to make future events, next year's event, even better. So uh, if you could please just spend a few minutes completing that, it would be a, a huge help. But uh, once again, thank you very much indeed for your presence. Your questions have been fabulous. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all again in future events and certainly to this one next year. Thank you.